Hi there, welcome back to the Counter Chronicles episode 33. Yes, we're back and with a whole new vision. We're going to carry on with the Philippines and uh, traveling there, but we're going to deal, we've dealt a lot with the um, decent parts of the Philippines, the goods and the bads, but now we're going to hit on the darker side of the Philippines. So this is a two-part series, and so for episode 33, part one, we're going to deal with drugs. And if you want to know more, just hang around. Back in a mo. Welcome back. You stayed. Good. Okay, let's get straight into this. We all know that in every country there, there is a drug problem. It doesn't matter where you live or who you are. You're bound to see it at some point in life. You could live in the suburbs uh, of a big city and live a very nice life and not see the dark side of the drugs. And then you could live inside the city and witness it all the time. Just like any other country, Philippines also has a drug problem. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware of this. And uh, it is a scour the scourge of society. And it seems to be more prevalent in countries of greater poverty. Third world countries, lesser developed countries, such as the Philippines, uh, India and others. However, a lot of these countries tend to hide this because it is an embarrassment. And the worst part of the drug scene there is that it's easily available, easily obtainable and cheap. Okay, we're going to look at what type of drugs there are. You know, the most simplest one that they use there, especially the youth, is called rugby. Like the game, rugby. What it is, is basically solvent abuse, glue sniffing, um, and other highly potent chemical sniffing. You'll see some children using it. You can see some adults using it. It is the very cheapest form, but it is endemic to creating a worse drug situation there. Uh, it's not the best of things to see, but it's very difficult to stop. You know, going on, you will have smaller amounts of marijuana, cocaine, maybe even heroin. But the drug of choice in the Philippines for mostly adults and youths of teen years would be shabu. What is shabu? Shabu is crack cocaine, crystal meth. Uh, ice or whatever name you want it to go by highly addictive uh, easily available in the Philippines due to two reasons um, hidden labs that produce it and the importation illegal smuggling and importation through countries like China etc etc and if you take into consideration that um, the Philippines has a great amount of coastline I can assure you that smuggling from the sea is not very hard. I'm not saying that the uh, Philippines Customs and Border Forces and their Coast Guards can't deal with it, but they can't deal with all of it, okay? They have a limited structure. And though they try very hard, it isn't easy to stop. Then you've got to look at, uh, you know, the other ramifications of it. And that is that there's a lot of corruption within that system. So you'll have certain customs officers, not all, certain Philippine National Police, not all, involved in some way, which was very prevalent when Duterte took power. So how can he deal with it? He's dealt with it in the only way he thought he could, and that was his war on drugs. You know, he went hell-bent for leather to solve this problem and we all know how you know he was uh, raiding and even killing individuals or his troops were trying to get rid of the big drug dealers some fled some stayed in the country and they're still running their little empires um what limited success or great success should i say i apologize great success duterte had as mayor of davao city in cleaning it up was amazing but that's one city 
You know, he's trying to clear up the whole country now. That's not such an easy thing to do, especially with corruption. The man fired th thousands of police officers because they were all on the take or they were just useless. He had to employ a whole load of new ones and still the problem exists. He feels that by executing, exterminating or eliminating or liquidating these people, it's going to stop. We all know real, real, in reality, it's not. Because where there's money to be made, there's always some scumbag trying to make it. Uh, you know, it all depends on how you want to look at the scenario, how it's played out. And it has varying degrees of success and failure. But it will always be there. Now, institutional corruption is probably the biggest issue to stopping these drugs and the drug dealers and the drug users. If there was less corruption, perhaps this could have been dealt with as Duterte wants. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with his methods. It doesn't mean I'm going to judge him for it. It is what he's done. We know from the West that no matter what we've tried, DEA, um, drugs departments, and all everything that, that's been tried through law enforcement and federal law enforcement, it didn't work. Even the capture of Escobar just put somebody else in his place. In Escobar's death, somebody else took his role. El Chapo. Who's next? There's another one. There's another one and there's another one. So in the Philippines, it'll be the same. You can kill or liquidate, we say, one of these big top dogs just to be replaced by his junior dog. And that becomes then the top dog. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? Who knows? However, we can't just uh, talk about that. Now we've got to talk about what, uh, what does this mean for expats and foreign tourists? Now, um, without being judgmental, it's not what we're here for. We're going to talk about when you visit the Philippines as a tourist and as, or as an expat. There are some that may partake in these uh, chemical concoctions. There may be some that like them, maybe some that wish to try them. I'd have a, a bit of warning about that. Now, up till this point, nobody or no foreigner that I'm aware of has been taken out by Duterte's uh, teams. I haven't heard of any foreigner being killed by Duterte or his teams. However, that doesn't mean to say someone won't be the first. So my advice or my warning to anybody deciding to go to the Philippines and play with this stuff, there's severe consequences. First and foremost, if you're not taken out permanently by one of his teams, you could end up in one of his jails. If any of you know about Binibid Prison or any other prison like that, you're not sure, check the YouTube videos. It's scary stuff. Thousands of men crammed in to a very small area with a gang-based hierarchy that run the place because the prison guards don't. And the prison warden is just there as a figurehead. It is run by gangs. And if you don't fall into line, they're going to beat you or they're going to take you out. And as a foreigner, you're going to be the biggest target. They will take you out and they won't think twice about it. And it's up to you to make that choice. Are you going to risk it? You know, the least that can happen to you is a severe fine and deportation. But deportation could mean anything from five to ten years, depending on how the judge sees it. If they see you as an habitual drug user, they could keep you out for ten years or maybe longer. 
if it's a first time thing, you've got no offenses anywhere else, maybe they'll just kick you out for five years. But it still means you've got to wait five years to return back to a place you may love. Is it worth it? And it stays on Interpol's records. So let's say you decide, oh, to hell with it. I'm not going back to the Philippines. I've been deported. I've got to wait five years. I'll go to Thailand. You might get to Thailand, land in the air, go through immigration. They put your passport through the scanner and it comes up. Boom. Drugs related charge and conviction in the Philippines. Why? The crime happened in the Philippines. Why won't they let me into Thailand? Because they don't have to. Understand how the law works. I do. This is part of what I do. I know this stuff and I know it well. And I know it very, very well. In fact, I'm a goddamn expert because for 14 years, that's what I do. So, excuse the blasphemy for anybody that's religious. I'm not. I'll put it to you this way. Uh, any country's immigration service can refuse you entry if you're not a national. Even for just simple belligerence or rudeness, you can be arrested and deported. Okay? And that's if you're rude and belligerent to a foreign, uh, to, a, to, a, to an official. So, ask yourself a bunch of questions. Is it worth the risk? Will you be the first one to be liquidated as a foreigner? Will you be deported? Who can you trust? Take a tip from me. If you're not prepared to wager your own life on it, don't try it. Leave it alone. If you're on the wacky backy, if you're on prescription drugs that aren't prescribed to you, don't bring them with you. Don't take the chance. This isn't your own home country where you might go to a, uh, uh, a little pleasure camp instead of a proper prison. The Philippines do not believe on treating or in treating their prisoners with kid gloves. They go in hard, they go in fast, and they will slap you down. Your choice, really. Okay, that's about it from me for this for this episode. Part two will be released shortly, and that will look at sex workers, bar girls, STIs, and STDs. Yes, we're going there. Once again, it'll be a non-judgmental video. Okay, we're not here to judge what people do. We're here to give awareness, potential advice, and warnings. It's up to you how you take it. Okay, we can only tell you. As I say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Okay, from me at the Calma Chronicles. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. We could do with some subscribers. We want to bring this information out to as many people as we can. If not, share with your friends, promote my channel. I'd really appreciate it. A thumbs up would, would really help the algorithm boost us. And as I say, I am not monetized. I'm not doing this for money. I am doing this because I think I'm trying to do a good job helping people as much as I can. So thanks once again from me, Perry at the Counter Chronicles. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.